For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is Dr. Lorraine Doherty to discuss her book titled Engineering Ethics in Southern Africa. As an academic in the field of engineering, you have long advocated for the application of ethics in the engineering field. Why do you think that the professional conduct of engineers is such an important issue? Thank you, Sine. Well, um, I think first and foremost, um, something that perhaps we often forget is that engineers now work in a social context. So they're no longer people that work in isolation from the communities in which they serve. And as such, if you work in a social context, there's a definite and obvious need for ethics, which we know is value based and which helps us in terms of our decision making, because we are now understanding and knowing what is right, what is wrong what is fair, what is unfair, and all those sorts of permutations. So a social context is really the driving force in modern day engineering. And can you also now discuss one interesting case study in your book to highlight the value of this title? Well, there's lots of case studies in the book, and they are all very much um, South African based, which makes it very, very different. I think for myself, perhaps, one of the most obvious case studies, which I think gives us um, a good understanding of the need for ethics, is the Tongart Mall case study. Essentially, a mall was going to be built in KwaZulu-Natal in a place called Tongart. And the first we, we really got to understand what was going on with the project was when it collapsed, killing people and obviously hurting workers as well. And um, the concrete slab collapsed um, on top of them. And when the subsequent investigations were undertaken, it was found that the engineers had not only used substandard materials, particularly the concrete mix that was actually from Pakistan, and it did not conform with our SABS standards, but it was also found that there were no approved building plans. So this project, if you like, this engineering project had uh, been undertaken uh, by people who were using inadequate materials. There was not a single professional engineer on site who would have been able perhaps to have identified issues with some of the construction techniques and some of the plans that were being used and they were constantly changed on site without approval and also the mall was being built without municipal approval so i think in each one of those instances that we've we've looked at there we can see where ethical decision making was was really non-existent um, and it comes as no surprise that the consequences were as catastrophic as they were. Mm. What are your future hopes for discussions and education around uh, engineering ethics in our country? Well what I'm hoping that um, the book provides is a template for engineering ethics. Mm. I've been teaching engineering ethics now for in excess of a decade. And I know when I first came to the learning project, there were no templates and some of the lectures that I, I attended were not really done with a view to engineers. It was done with a view to philosophy, moral philosophy specifically. So in developing this book, I've developed, if you like, a three pillar approach, which is integrated. So the first pillar, we're looking at moral philosophy, which we need to understand because it helps guide our values. The second pillar of the book, we're looking at engineering professionalism. So we're looking at the scope and the need for our engineering council in South Africa. We're looking at the governance and the compliance. We're looking at things like whistleblowing. We're looking at things like risk, safety, mitigation. We're looking at public engagement. So it's all the things that need to be championed by modern engineers. And then the third pillar of the book is case studies. And that, if you like, is a synthesis of both the first pillar, which is moral theory, the second pillar, which is engineering professionalism. And we see how those two synthesize in terms of engineering activities. So that three pillar approach, if you like, is something that I'm hoping will be adopted going forward in the study of engineering ethics.
Mm, and now in chapter six, where you discuss Ubuntu, you share interesting projects like uh, the Lesotho mm. Highlands Water Project, which has changed mm. the livelihoods of people living nearby. Mm. Tell us more about that. Well, I think perhaps for the first time, um, the book actually deals with two areas of moral philosophy that have very rarely been shared. One is African ethics, and we know that the cornerstone of African ethics is Ubuntu. The other is environmental ethics. And what we're seeing in both of these two moral philosophies is we are seeing that morals and ethics are organic. And what do I mean by that? I mean that they change over time. So we see our values changing as perhaps science comes into the ascendancy. So we now feel very differently about some things and we value them very differently than we might have done even 50 years ago. And we only need to look at our own country to see um, the organic nature, if you like, of ethics. We've moved from a state of apartheid into a state of democracy. And our, we've got associated values with both of those. When we look at something like African ethics, we're moving towards what we would call a relative ethical paradigm. We're now understanding that the world isn't driven by Western philosophy. Africa has its very own set of ethics, as does India, as does the Far East and China. And we know that African ethics is centered on communalism. It's community based. It's not, um, I think, therefore I am. That individualist and atomistic way of looking things has been pushed to one side. I'm a person through other people. So we're seeing this, this, this feeling of community that comes to the fore. And something like African ethics was very much uh, underpinning, if you like, the, the Lesotho Highlands project, where the community benefited and where that, that sense of communalism was very much at the fore. It wasn't something whereby an individual was not considered. Who should be reading uh, this book uh, about engineering ethics? Well, Sine, it's been written by myself for um, three different sets of people, really, almost. It's been written for students at TVETS, it's been written for undergrads at university, and most importantly, it's also been written for uh, practicing engineers who are perhaps undertaking their um, continuous professional development points. What's become very apparent is perhaps people who were educated in engineering maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago were not exposed to engineering ethics. And I'm hoping that when they buy this book and find the, the contents inform perhaps some of their activities and their, their decision making, I'm hoping that they will find it as useful as people who are learning to be engineers. If you were to look at the state of our country now, would you say that maybe engineering uh, still has a role to play when it comes to reviving maybe new projects that could upgrade the infrastructure in our country? Absolutely, because the infrastructure can only be upgraded by engineering activity. So engineers have a very key role to play in, um, in South Africa. I think like many many countries, we are in a state where our infrastructure, be it roads, be it ports, be it airports, they are now getting to the stage where their existing mm -hmm. lifespan is almost come to an end. And similarly, we're also looking, when we look at um, mechanical engineers, we're looking at um, production lines and so on and so forth. There's obviously new, new technologies that are coming into play with mining as well. Um, new technologies are coming into play. It's helping us in terms of organizational efficiencies, which ultimately obviously benefit everybody. So engineering does have a role to play, be it through construction, be it through mechanical, be it through aeronautical, be it through agricultural there's all different sorts be it through electrical which is very much top of mind at the moment i'm sure with our load shedding and escom crisis <laughs> yes please can we have as many electrical engineers as we can and uh, we'd like the added advantage of them being ethical <laughs> <laughs> which has also come very much to the fore when we talk about um, a, a state-owned enterprise like ESCOM. So we can mm. see um, the importance of engineers, but 
also perhaps the importance of ethical engineers, particularly within state-owned enterprises, where we very often see uh, what we would, as, uh, as ethicists, call goodness and mm -hmm. flourishing. We see those kinds of things slipping through the floorboards um, in favour of individ individualistic and atomistic concerns, you know, the greed um, that we, we see coming to the fore. Mm. For some people who've been maybe in the field for a very long time, do you think they have mm. anything to learn from this book? I certainly hope so, because what I've noticed in my time within the engineering profession is that engineers are very good at engineering. Their hard skills are particularly well developed. It's in the area of their soft skills that need developing. So we have very good engineers, um, and I'm not disputing that. In fact, they're world-class engineers, not least because um, our courses do conform to the Washington Accord. So our engineers can go anywhere in the world. Their learning is recognized. So I think that's something that we, we must embrace. So we've got world-class engineers, but I think very often the ethics, the moral philosophy, if you like, is uh, something that needs further work. And hopefully the way in which my book has been constructed with the three pillars, the language is very, very easy. Um, it isn't language that is steeped in philosophical um, vocabulary. Um, I think that would be very off-putting. Um, so I'd like to feel that it's very reader friendly mm -hmm. and the lessons there can be used by any engineer in whatever discipline they work. That was Dr. Lorraine Doherty speaking to Klima Media's Polity, discussing her book titled Engineering Ethics in Southern Africa.